This impeachment is a hoax, a very big hoax. It has played out like a farce from the early beginnings of the Trump presidency all the way to the theatrical march to physically deliver the articles of impeachment to the Senate floor. Sooner or later, this farce will come to an end. The question is how exactly would this happen? Once the Democrats left the political environment and entered the realm of the law, all their contradictions will surface and nothing kills a legal argument as a contradiction. The contradictions are many. They have wanted to impeach him even before he took office. They accused Donald Trump of exactly what they themselves did. They have tried and abandoned different approaches. The last one they chose was the most flimsy excuse for impeachment they could find. A phone call without any visible bad consequences, regardless of how they edit the transcribed words. A conversation that has evolved from bribery to quid pro quo to extortion to end up as a vague abuse of power and a very silly obstruction of Congress. The Democrats have gotten away with plenty of dubious moves because the media are eager to manipulate the news against President Trump. However, the game is over. The law does not play games. The law creates a collective brain of its own using very strict legal rules and procedures. The Democrats' accusation will not pass the legal filters needed to get a conviction. Here I present a broad description of the sequence of questions that must be answered to reach a verdict. The law adopts a Boolean logic sequence. Call it a yes or no binary algorithm to ensure a perfect outcome. Once in the legal domain, fairness has nothing to do with witnesses. It has to do with following the established procedure and due process wherever that may take you. The first question is whether the House and the accusers are entitled to impeach. The Constitution gives the power to the House, but it assumes a high crime or misdemeanor has been committed and that both parties agreed that only impeachment will provide some kind of protection. Should the answer be no, then the case should be dismissed. If yes, you go to the next question. Did the accusers follow due process? Absolutely not. Private hearings and no opportunity for witnesses or a chance for Republicans to have to contradict the case. If the answer is no, you should dismiss the case. If yes, you go to the next question. The next question is, are the articles of impeachment constitutional? Most likely not. Why? Because neither of the two articles are included in the Constitution. They belong to a category that is not defined, meaning not specified, and therefore do, do not meet the criteria that crimes have to be defined before they happen. So, case dismissed. Even so, if they are deemed correct, then you go to the next filter. The next filter or Boolean logic decision is was the defendant fulfilling an obligation? If the answer is yes, you have to declare the defendant not guilty. Laws do not contradict themselves. If you have an obligation to perform some duty, that same conduct cannot be prohibited or penalized at the same time. That is simple. If the answer is no, then you go to the next logical gate.
Was the defendant empowered to act in that way? Maybe the defendant did not have the obligation, but he did have the power to decide to act this way. This argument is very strong because the executive is clearly in charge of conducting foreign policy. So, the way he chooses to conduct such policy is entirely up to him. It underscores the fact that Trump's call did not produce any grave consequences. The yes sends him to not guilty. A no sends the matter to the next stop. The question of whether the defendant acted with or without malice, did he act with malice, is very much related to the previous one. In criminal cases, you must prove that the defendant acted with a guilty conscience, knowing full well the damage he was doing. Given that the aid to Ukraine was delivered before the deadline makes this a moot question. No damage, no crime. A potential danger of the delay in giving the aid, given the war between Ukraine and Russia, does not reach the gravity for impeachment. Impeachment is meant to be a really despicable behavior with a very wide popular indignation. No signs of this anywhere. The question whether the defendant acted without malice is very much related to the previous one. In criminal cases, you must prove that the defendant acted with a guilty conscience, knowing full well the damage he was doing. Given that the aid to Ukraine was delivered before the deadline, makes this a moot question. No damage, no crime. A potential danger in the delay of the aid given, and given the fact of the war existing between Ukraine and Russia, does not reach the gravity for impeachment. Impeachment is meant to act over crimes that are really despicable behaviors with a very wide popular indignation. No signs of this exist anywhere. Finally, we arrive to the question, is there proof beyond a reasonable doubt? Hearsay has gone a long way in the House procedures. But the game is over. Assuming that all the hurdles were passed, where is there someone testifying that he heard or saw the President act illegally and with criminal intent? Nobody. The alleged whistleblower has been hidden because he is more of a risk to the Democrats than a decisive witness. He saw nothing, heard nothing, all hearsay. So guilty is impossible. Non-guilty, the only conclusion remaining. Knowing full well that the Republican Senate majority will never convict President Trump, you have to look at the secondary effects of this bogus impeachment, and then you notice that it has given the Democrats an excuse for doing nothing in the past year and a half since they got control of the House, and it could also seek to debilitate President Trump's chances for re-election, which is very doubtful it will work, but anyway, they try everything. The final hidden motive is to discredit four or five Republican senators from controversies arising 
and the calling or not calling of more witnesses. The Democrats would then have at least a theoretical chance of having both chambers of Congress and be in a position to undo many of President Trump's successes after his re-election. This valuable assessment comes from Trey Gowdy. To foreign observers, as myself, it seems so absurd that so much effort, time, and money be wasted in this bogus trial. In the end, Democrats are ignoring that politics is very counterintuitive and that they could be producing exactly the opposite practical result from the one intended by the trial. They will have to learn the hard way that what they're doing is wrong and that people will realize this sooner or later. Thank you for watching.